Hello there. We are taking a look today at two Clulo Hive pieces. Uh, you can look at my previous video where I restored a Hive branded Clulo and find a little bit about the beekeeper himself. Uh, as well as uh, some of our challenges of patching what was a 60 year old Hive. Here we also have some older pieces of his, this one being close to 40 years old now. But there's actually something very important I need to point out. This is a point of concern. You see, this says MD86ETO. Now, I figured that that must have been, oh, this is um, before inspectors put stickers on equipment. And it probably stands for Maryland, the year, and ETO, which I, I suppose was the inspector. I am completely wrong, at least on the last part. It is indeed Maryland. It is 1986, and it is done by an inspector, but ETO is, this is ethylene oxide vaporization treatment, meaning that this box, according to my state inspector, at some point was in a yard with a confirmed case of American foul brood. Uh, it's truly the worst ailment um, that a bee yard can have. Uh, it can stay in the equipment for... I believe uh, 30 years or more. Um, this box uh, was not only treated once, but the way that she explained it was initially it's MD and then ETO, and then the second treatment they put the year, so it was treated twice. American foul brood is a very real threat out there, and it can stay on equipment for decades. Uh, so that's a very real threat, and it is why a lot of beekeepers say, hey, don't use equipment. Uh, that comes from uncertain sources, don't buy uh, used equipment. Um, I can see why they feel that way. Is the threat that much? I don't think so. And I did consult uh, a few professional opinions before that, but we're gonna go ahead with the restoration and we will put this one to use. And just as an extra measure, I'm gonna torch the inside of this box again at the very end, uh, just, just to be doubly safe. So a problem that all of them have is they're not very square anymore. See this? Shouldn't be able to wiggle like that. Uh, we could fix that with some glue, some fasteners. Uh, on this box, I think our strategy is going to try to be to remove the nails, uh, at least from the front, because we need to fix this very nasty crack that goes along the top. And I think we would best do that as putting it together as one piece. It could be a thing for wood filler to solve, but, you know, I, I'd like to try to do it right. And the nails seem loose enough. I think if we just give it a little bit of a pounding, we can get the nail head up, pry it out, and then just pull the panel off. The three tools I'm pulling out to try to get this off for one, I'm going to try to use a mallet to knock from the other side to try to get uh, at least a nail head out. Another is I'm actually going to use a hive tool in the wrong way. I'm going to try to use as a nail puller. Uh, you'd be surprised how closely hive tools look like nail pullers. And frankly, how many people are using nail pullers thinking they're hive tools because they look very similar. I also got this guy, if I can get the head out enough to get in there and get good leverage and just pull it out. We got one loose enough to try to pull it out. And there we go. We got this nail right here. I'm trying not to block the view and I'm trying to pull it upward as opposed to across because I don't want to create a greater hole and there we go nice each one at a time Wow, I'm, I'm very impressed these nails have held out for 40 years now this is where I'm pausing on this side I don't think I need to go any lower than this because now I can get wood glue well into this joint and I can join both of these pieces. Now, something I noticed too is that this has been broken for a while. Now, how can you tell that, Charles? Well, if you lift it up, you can see the paint that went into the crack. So this thing was probably painted when it was sitting upside down and paint leaked into it and sealed up the joint for a while. But I'm going to give this a little brushing with a brush, um, not to take any of the surface off. We're going to glue it and we're going to reattach it. So we have our plan. We're going to glue this 
and it could have done well with that, but I don't want any rot to get in here, so I'd rather it glue together and become a solid piece and the box be more sturdy. Furthermore, we are going to put new outdoor fasteners on the outside, deck screws in this case. Um, and we're just going to make the box more secure. Then we're going to kind of fill in any of the cracks with either wood filler or glue, depending on the size of the crack. Now, pardon me, I have a loud cat accosting me who's obsessed with me. Uh, she's going to probably poke the stand a few times, cry. I swear to God I'm petting her. She has food. She just wants my attention. Even if I'm trying to YouTube like with the kids. So, let's wood glue this up real nice. Just a nice thin coat. Just enough. With my awesome brush here and these pieces fit together real well with really no no crack left over and since we have it apart we might as well glue the edge over here like I'm not gonna pull the other one out we're just gonna hope that the fastener gets that All right it's pilot hole time let's find a few places that we don't have nail holes so we get nice fresh wood and I can feel by the drilling that the wood in there is real good. Anytime I reuse one of the old holes for the nails, I always kind of dip the screw in wood glue. I was taught to do that. I don't know if it, how helpful it is. But I hope that it would help. There we go. Okay, no splits. We got those in there. We're going to set this guy on all gentle like. I see we have some concern. Like over here, yeah, there's a tiny bit of rot in there. We push some of the crud out of the cavity. That looks like a case where wood filler will help us out. Looked like he had that problem before because you see how he has these small nails that he knocked down in here? I think it was to kind of secure and fix that crack. Let's get this guy on there. Okay. Got together and it's glued. And hopefully it's providing a, a nice seal so that nothing gets into that crack. So let's put a couple screws in here and secure it. And then we'll go about starting to fill some other things. Over on the other side, it has a minor crack, but I don't think that's anything that paint or maybe a little bit of wood glue wouldn't fill in. We're going to put some pilot holes in here. other down here push this a little deeper there we go I like to have it flush and not standing proud right, let's get these guys okay that one was a little closer to the edge than I would have liked but we didn't split it so, how's the box now? See? No no wobbling. We have this guy right here that I'm, I was given the poke test to see if it's truly rot. And by the way that the wood is snapping, no, it's just part of the wood wall that has peeled off. I'm going to try to fill this in with glue to kind of stabilize it again. And uh, just paint over it. Now this corner, which is the front, is where the wood filler is going to come in. These little pieces, they're not really rotted out. It looks like they just either chipped off or maybe he split it when he was making it and they were never really there. 
I really couldn't tell you, but this is where I would fill with wood filler, and I think it would come out well. Because with wood filler with hive boxes, like if I put it on the ends where the boxes touch each other, that's, that's where you have problems because I've pulled boxes apart because uh, they get propolis together, and I have pulled the wood filler patch right off. Uh, so I really don't like doing it on surfaces like that. Um, so that, that's where we are, but I, 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 think we, uh, I think we can solve this issue. And now we're moving to our next box. I'm going to mix the wood filler at the end so I can get everything. But our main concerns here are, okay, this guy is prone to failing down here because of the missing wood. We have some splits here. The box itself is very wobbly because it's it's just not sturdy in the, in the joints anymore. So we'll just tighten it up with new screws. It's also hard to see on camera, but we have a lot of distinctive cracks that go along here, which, you know, might be able to get painted over, but we're gonna put some wood glue in them anyway and see how that goes. Um, the missing joints, however, at least the uh, joints that aren't doing so well, we're going to put wood filler in those. Um, so I, I think we're pretty sure of what we got to do. We just got to secure the box with some new fasteners. And we might pull out a few old fasteners that are sticking out like this one. And that was rotten at one point. I feel it right here. It's, it's depressed. But at least the conditions that had it um, in bad shape aren't there anymore. So if those conditions came back like that, that joint may rot. So we're going to want to take good care of it, uh, paint it real well, uh, which probably is going to mean giving this box a good sanding before we, uh, before we give it a good paint job. And I'm going to paint it inside and outside. For the most part, the nails aren't failing. So I'm going to pull a couple of the ones sticking out, replace them with screws. Ooh, I don't like that. Yeah, that came out way too easy. It tells me that, that that hole there probably suffers some rot along the interior. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use that as my pilot hole, but I'm going to dip the screw itself into wood glue and hope that works out for me. <laughs> All right, I think we can pour it out here. Came out, it's should have been a little harder than that, but there was no use in just knocking the nail back in. It wasn't going to firm up anything. All right, we have a nail we pulled out in every corner. And it's all the center ones. I'm going to dip it in glue and screw it in. And hopefully that shores up uh, all four corners of the box. All right, let's put the next one in. Get a small dip in wood glue. Uh oh, it is going in there at an angle I don't like. Maybe we'll ride. Alright, we let it ride and it still worked out for us. <laughs> I was like, eh, I could pull out, but you know, just let it ride. Let's see, did that tighten it? Oh, yes, it did. It, um,. You may not see it on camera very well, but it's significantly tightened up. It's very easy to manipulate that way. Now I want to just put wood glue in that crack right there. And it's kind of borderline where I would use wood filler, to be honest with you. But I think, I think that's a good job for wood glue. Some may say I overdid it. But on the two panels, I filled in all the major cracks. And there's a little bit on the surface, but I don't care about that. I'll paint right over it. Now we have our final candidate for the day, which I've been using as a swarm trap. Uh, I often mark my swarm traps when I put them out. I, I have this, which has a phone number on it for people to call. I'll use a Google Voice number uh, for that, uh, that contacts my phone. Um, a few interesting things about this hive looking at it. It has true handles, but they put these extra supports on there because the beekeeper, he was getting more elderly um, in the uh, early 2000s when he stopped keeping bees. And then this sat out in a pile for, I think, until 2016. 
And uh, he gave me the pile and some of these hive pieces I, I still have. Uh, this one I used for a couple years uh, until I had this issue here on the side. And this is predominantly where my main issue is. Uh, there's rot, really nasty rot, right in the hive wall here around the handle. Uh, this panel itself is about 90% of the rot on the box. And you can see this, this box had a, had a pretty long life this far. If we look inside of it, it's hard for you to see on the camera, but this top is a patch. This, um, this inner wall along here, that's a patch. Along the bottom right here, this is a patch. So we literally have three patches on this box. Um, and then this, this hole on the side. Uh, you may wonder like, man, why are you getting holes and rot here? That's a weird place to get it. Well, let's talk about rot for a second. What causes rot? Uh, rot is caused by fungus. Uh, to produce fungus, you need one of the spores for it, which is gonna find pretty much all wood. And what you're also gonna need is moisture and warmth. And the longer set something stays moist, uh, the more it's going to rot and get in there and just wreck it like this. Now you may ask, why the hell isn't the rot along the bottom? Well, one, he, he patched two, two bottom uh, panels of this box. Um, so he has had some of those issues. And there is a little bit along here, which is also rotten. So there is some along the bottom. But it's how he did the handles, actually, that did this. Which, this is the first box I've seen this. Uh, you can see he added an additional handle on these uh, because he was getting older and it was harder to get in there and grip uh, and harder to get a good hold on the box. And I'm going to try to remove this one too. But this one just tore the hell off and then took a lot of the rotten wall with it. The other wall doesn't have this problem, but I'm guessing what happened is that this was sitting in the pallet outside this inner side was the one that was hugged up against other boxes and even though there was a little gap in there i think water landed on that uh little handle that he put in there and got in between and it just stayed moist all the time because the other handle doesn't have this issue the other handle the only issue with it is that the wood in it is failing and it should mean that the wood the wood glue in it is failing so it's just the fastener now and it's a little wobbly so I think I can pull that right off, but this, I sit back and wonder, do I replace the whole panel? What do I do? And honestly, what I would normally do with something like this and what I would advise people is if you're going to do something with it, turn it into a swarm trap like I did here, put a piece of flex tape on both sides of the, of the big gaping hole, and then it, let it, let it ride out its retirement doing that for you. Uh, why did I even bring this into the shop here? Well, the challenge, uh, that's it. This is not a practical issue that happens with beekeeping equipment. It's a very specialized one. And I was debating, okay, am I going to patch just this right here? And how would I cut a patch for that? Do I two two rabbits to give it uh, a shelf to lay on? But I'm looking over at the side right here and you know that's that's pretty rotted out but the other panels in good shape and over here we have the same problem just stick my hand in there and just push this crud in so this is something that just putting a piece of flex and you can see I've actually done that I uh, I taped it up real well and I put it out as a swarm trap and it's caught three or four swarms for me so it uh, it does its job but uh, it's in such bad shape that I either need to patch it or, uh, or retire it to uh, be incinerated, really. Uh, but we're just going to, we're going to, we're going to do a repair on this. Now, all right, so I'm going to cut these off so I can burst the nails and then I can pull what's left of the box joint out. I'm going to do that on both sides. Here we go. Doesn't have to be a great cut, just has to work. Trying to see what angle I can come at this and uh, have good sight, but... Try the second cut here. 
Once again, always wear your safety glasses with these things. It uh, ain't worth your vision. Alright, here we are. We can pull some of these things out. Uh, and we'll be doing that in a second. Let's take a look at that board. See that the rot is just so nasty. I'm going to try to free some of these up. And the teeth left over aren't exactly going to be beautiful either. But let's see what we can do. Let's be forceful and tap it with a mallet. burst it and we just want it up enough to where we can pull the nail free. Now here's a good example. See this nail that snapped off on the other end? When it's right against the rotten wood it starts thinning the side of it and rusting the nail down. Alright, I think I'm going to try to pry this handle off. I might come to regret that. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna see how this goes. I hope I, I don't rip the side off this box doing it. Because the glue has failed and my choices are either re-glue it um, Okay, it's coming off pretty well. There we go. Alright, no rot. Alright, so here's our main concerns with this box. We have the minor one of this corner which is cracking and we do have cracks along here but rod isn't really that significant and honestly if I take off the swarm trap piece here I think that uh, a lot of these cracks would fill in with paint some of them are a little bit wider than I like so this side might get uh, quite a bit of wood gluing or maybe even some wood filler pushed in but it's really not rotten. Um, it's cool to see the history of this box. It's almost all four sides were patched in some way. We're going to use the jigsaw to try to remove the teeth. I'm not sure if this particular one is, uh, is long enough, but we'll see. this service which will give a little bit of sanding to make it nice and rough and hopefully we'll make it a little flatter and gluable. I'm also going to cut off this piece of this patch right here which it looks like he used this nail right here to secure and just kind of clamp it in. Uh, but most honestly that's the only part of the patch that failed and it failed in the corner so we're not going to take the whole patch off. There's no reason to do that. Well nuts poking here and it's not the edge here just isn't isn't passing the poke test and you can you can see it really yeah the whole patch itself is starting to fail like right about here it's good so let me feel it along here all right we're gonna Use the saw again. Now you may say, wow Charles, that, that sure looks like a cheap chisel you're using. It is, like it practically came in a white box that said wood chisel on it. But I'm only learning, so I, I wanted to grab a cheap tool that I, I wouldn't mind if I messed it up a little bit. And I can always sharpen it if it becomes dull. Traditionally when I needed to do a little bit of wood chiseling, I used a flathead screwdriver. So it, uh... Okay, we drove that pretty well. We got the part off we wanted. And there is a little gap where we cut the other piece. But it's not substantial. Uh, that's something that wood filler will solve, which... I think wood filler is going to fill in a few uh, sins for this box. Alright, we're going to trace a patch. Basically this is the right thickness. This is a uh, recycled 
plank from my old fence that I just tore down. It's the right thickness. Gives me what I need. We're gonna match the height right there. A little dot there in the corner. But we wanna try our best to make this at least a little squared, so I'm gonna use the level right there. Trace it. Trace along this to get a good idea of where the patch is gonna go. Now it's not gonna fit all great and snug right here because of how deep I cut. But once again, that, that's going to be wood filler's problem. All right, well, here's our situation. We got the piece cut. It's a little taller than we want. Now, we can plane it down, sure, but I don't think I have a planer. So I, I think I might try to chisel it, which might be dumb. But um, a planer would be the ideal tool here. Uh, I could also try to cut the cut a little bit, uh, a little bit lower. I'm, I'm really not sure what that would cost me if I messed it up. Well, we do have a chisel here, so just taking a little bit off the top might be idyllic here. Oh, I see. I got to clamp this box in some way to make it not go away on me. Oh, that piece wants to come right off, huh? It might be going a little deeper than I want, though, some of this. I might win the YouTube award for most incompetent use of a chisel. Mix it up. All right, let's put some wood glue along the rest of it that is flush. Maybe we can join it. Nice. Get it on there. Oh, good stuff. And then the excess comes out the side right there. Which we oh actually I didn't take I didn't uh, I didn't quite glue these two pieces together. Let me fix that. Okay. Pretty ugly, but it works. Okay. Let's hope for the best. That lined up. We're gonna try this end one first. That way it doesn't sink into the, the little bit of a an abyss we have over there. Nice. Okay, we have that one, and now we can get the additional ones in. Okay. 
Okay, one more, one more. Here we have a place where the nail and the glue have failed. Uh, you can see the the board is warped, it's pressed in, it's pulled the nail along with it. So we're actually going to put glue in here and use an additional fastener and push that back together. All right, let's get some in between there. Could just pour a little bit on there and uh, let gravity do it for us, but I don't want to flood it either. All right, let's get our pilot hole right here. Try to put this guy in a little diagonal going down, not enough to hit the other screw. Excuse me, not to hit the nail that's in there. Enough to do what we gotta do. Now we could split this. That could happen here. Um, maybe it would have been better to like put this in hot water and try it first, but let's hope for the best. Oh, hell yeah, we didn't snap it. Once again, significant cracks, no rot significant cracks in the wood and the they just have to be filled in uh, whether we do that with wood glue or paint or something they have to be filled in final verdict before slats is that there is a little bit of softness in here there is a little bit of rot it's not right on the bottom that passes the poke test uh, but there is a tiny bit here now I don't know surface wise how that is I don't feel it on the other side but I'm probably going to cover that in and hide it. Um, I could also just cut a strip on the bottom and complete this box to where on uh, all four corners uh, on the bottom they were patched. Um, I think I'm going to avoid that. While we're at it, I'm taking these handles off. Once again, I hope I don't cause more damage doing this. But um, honestly, they're not really useful to me. And on top of it, when the lid gets on the box, it almost falls flush with these. And I don't like that because I think moisture is going to build there. Like, you know, I, I don't, don't need the extra handle. And the handles on this box are adequate. So, here's another joint of concern. Like, doing the poke test, a little rot in. Especially right over here. Um... Could patch it because uh, it is above the it is above where the true handle is. Um, but I personally feel that the other side isn't rotten. I, I'm just gonna seal this over with wood glue. Maybe get uh, not wood glue but uh, wood filler. I'll chip some of the rot out and just pack it in there. It's on the side to where I'm more about mitigating rot instead of cutting it off there. Like when I patch, it's usually because it's along the bottom or the top. That's it. Um, when it's in the sides, all about trying to cover it up and keep it to just not keep, just make it to where the rot doesn't keep spreading. Let's review our game plan. We're gonna take one or two boards and just butt joint them together here. Uh, I'm probably gonna make a little bit of a smoother edge sanding uh, real quick, but uh, like that should go together well. And um, we're going to go along the box and like do some wood filler here and there. Um, and we'll probably give it a little bit of a sanding uh, before that. Another guy that concerns me that's uh, far too much wobble from that patch. I think we'll put a little glue in between the patch and just reclamp it or just put uh, a couple thin nails that are longer in here uh, to sturdy it. We showed in some of those cracks and you can see I was pretty liberal with the wood glue. But this should give it enough depth to clamp it for that crack that joins this top piece which is a patch. Uh, there is a better way to do this. If you had a nail gun with the right length of nails, that would be better than doing this. Let's continue working on our Frankenhive here. We're going to glue up the sides for the butt joint. The butt joint is when we just put two pieces together. 
don't cut anything out of them. There's no shelf, there's no box joints, nothing. You're just putting wood end to end. With modern wood glues, you know, it's not a bad situation, but it's not exactly the longevity you're looking for either. In a previous video, I discussed, you know, why do hives use box joints? And it, it goes back to really the natural glues, which are made out of animal byproducts or vegetable byproducts. Uh, about 170 years ago when Langstroth hives were invented. And glues then sucked um, compared to modern glues today. Do this one side at a time for our pilot holes. Make sure we're as close to the bottom as we can get there. Now I often uh, see people panic when they see a little bit of warping or they see a little gouge like this where it's not going to rest perfectly. The bees will normally fill that in with propolis and if it's big enough for them they, they sometimes just make another entrance out of it. A respected uh, beekeeper, Mr. Chu, he has a great YouTube video that talked about uh, when he bumped into a beekeeper when he was a kid that had a yard for like his equipment that's getting rotated out and getting older where the boxes are practically coming apart and uh, then he has his more pristine boxes and he talks about the natural rotation of equipment uh, he talks a little bit about recycling it in certain ways and he talks about that it's just natural it's going to occur like by all means I'm I'm in the party of trying to preserve as much of it as I can and elongate the life of boxes because once again beekeeping is prohibitively expensive I feel that the screw is getting good purchase into the wood which tells me that I'm getting into solid wood it has a different feel when it's like sponge I created a unique problem if I put one right here I'm gonna go straight into that screw um, so we're gonna have to move this now this is a drywall screw it's not ideal but it's the only thing of the proper length i got right now so we're just going to have to live with that There we go. That way we get to bite into it. Not as much as we'd want, but we still get into it. And if this joint ever warps, uh, it's less likely to fail with a screw in there. Done tracing the inside. I can't really get detailed with the tripod and film it all at once. I, I would have had to have my poor wife squeeze in there with me and all that and hold the camera. It wasn't worth it. I just traced along the side here. And then I traced where... And just put two points where... The top of the boxes because I'm going to have to uh, rip this board a little bit. Now I don't think you can see this line right here because I'm looking through the camera myself and I can't. But there is one there I assure you. Uh, I took the straight edge and I joined the two points at the end uh, and I even did a measurement of it of uh, what space was left and made sure everything matched up because I only get one attempt to rip this. So, pardon me if I bump the stand. Alright, we're about ready to go. The patch is right. We need to put a little bit more wood glue on here since it's drying out. And we need to put wood glue along here so that when these two get sandwiched together, they kind of clamp. I was thinking about even putting some type of board in between them or putting them in the vise overnight, which I might do. Let's put a fresh coat on there. And we're going to put a nice coat about just the right thickness between these two here. Right, let's get our pilots in and hope for the best. We're pushing down hard to get these together. And there is actually a little bit of a gap between the two pieces. Uh, so I'm definitely going to uh, put this in a vise and uh, get it together. Say so we didn't have a vise. Um, 
Could just put some heavy on top of it since it's flush with the top. All right, we have two more to pop in here. All right, let's get our last two of these in. I'm sure this uh, video has gone on long enough to where you don't need to see me paint this, but I did sand everything. Uh, my main goal is just to get all the loose paint off. Uh, sometimes I just scrape them off, but we got everything sanded well enough. Um, all the boxes have had all the cracks sealed with glue or filler, and I, I expect that these will last long enough. We also got the boxes nice and stable to where they're really not going to wobble anymore. And you can find that that can lead to future problems if you leave them all loose like that. We finally are. Everything is painted. The walls, which had a significant amount of cracking, they got quite a few layers of paint. This nice thick stuff that I purchased from Vector Supply. Uh, it filled in all the cracks, which really is part of our goal because we don't want moisture to form inside of those cracks and begin the rotting process or at least reactivate rot that's already there. So enough layers for this makes it fairly water resistant. On top of it, I got to experiment with uh, my golden paint pen and do some gold lettering along the brand. Uh, I didn't get to do that up here very well because the paint is still a tiny bit wet. So I'm going to put the fan on it and dry that out and I won't bore you with that. but. These are in pretty good shape now. I'm pretty proud about how they've come together, how we filled all the cracks, and how we've put this back into use. My leaving complaint is on this side, I don't have a handle now. Uh, so I have to grab the box front to back. But um, we could try to put one in there. I could make a jig to cut handles like that with my circular saw, but I really don't feel a need to. Uh, I am happy how these turned out. Uh, everything is in solid condition and uh, looks good. So thank you for joining me and uh, have a good one.